Today I'd like to show you how to knit and then apply a long stitch neckband. That's what was used on this raspberry colored sweater and also on the black and white striped sweater. They're very stable, good looking bands. These are two of the ten designs in my new Terrific Tunics book. On a brother, long stitch is achieved by leaving one bed so that it knits every row, as this would now do, and one so it knits every other row. Typically, we make the main bed knit every row and the ribber every other, but it can be done the other way. On passives, one bed is set to N and the other to CX, like that. My poor letters are nearly gone, so I have to use some other method of telling what it is. But you can see the C and the X. Setting is the same as for ribbing. It can either be knit one, purl one, every other needle as shown here, or full needle rib with beds set to alternate using every needle. Typically you want about the same stitch size as you would use for ribbing with one slight adjustment. The bed that is only going to knit every other row should probably be one whole stitch size, maybe even a little bit more, larger than the bed that is going to knit every row. I've decided on stitch size 4 for the every row bed. That key produces every row knitting. And stitch size 5 for the every other row bed. Circular arrow key will produce that. Watch what happens. Front bed has knitted. But you can see the back bed did not. Now both knitted. And we'll keep alternating like that for the entire length of the band. Here's the resulting band. This is the side that knitted every other row. This is the side that knitted every row. Either may be the right side, but you can see that they look different. So if you have more than one of these on any particular piece, you may want to be consistent. What we're going to do is lay this over my cut and surged edge and sew it in position. It could certainly just as well go over a shaped on the machine edge. This may be sewn on either by hand or machine. I'm going to do this one by hand and I usually sew it on from both the front and the back of the fabric. But I'm starting with the front because it matters to me that the curve be perfectly smooth on the front so I'd like to pin that down first. You can sew it on in a number of ways. Here I'm going down and up into the edge stitches. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that you can make this with both end stitches on either bed. The look will be slightly different depending on which you choose and I put both end stitches on the bed that was knitting every other row to get this effect. That gives me a nice size stitch to find with my eyes and stitch into with my needle. And yet my hand stitching just disappears when the stitching is completed. You just can't see it. I'm using matching sewing thread. You could potentially use yarn, but I usually use thread. Now, securing the inside, because I don't want flipping out to occur. I'm going into the fabric, but not all the way. So this line of stitching should not show on the right side. And just whip stitching it. It's a matter of pinning it down. This isn't really what's holding the neckline to the garment. And I always tug back a little to make sure I haven't restricted the neck. You can see how nicely 
this band flexes around the curve. Of course, in real life, this would be much prettier for two or three reasons. One, I had some trouble with my serger, and it made a messy edge. I found out that my thread was looped in an extra position, and that's what did it. But I just cleaned it up without redoing it, because I knew I could completely hide it. Second, you wouldn't, not only would you not leave a neck edge this sloppy in real life, you would also pick the best matching thread, which I did not do. And then you might have shaped the neckline on the machine, and if so, you would be looking at the shaped edge, not the surged edge. But in spite of all my naughtiness, it's a pretty neckband. You may have spotted this on the other end. I used the same piece of knitting for two neckbands. This one is called the Bias Band, and it's got a movie of its own. But here's this one. It's especially good for where you need a band that's sturdy and going to hold its shape well. There's a surprising bonus to this band. This is my bound off end. Usually I would knit more than I thought I needed and let it hang out at the end of the project. And then let me show you something amazing. We'll just snip it. Trim away the fuzz. That should be woven in. But we have an unraveling, I mean non-raveling, it's not going to unravel, lower edge. Amazing, isn't it? And now I would just run my latch tool through the loops at the end. Grab that little tail. Pull it in until it disappeared. One or two more little fuzzies came off. This has to do with the construction of the stitches. You want to see it again? You do have to make sure you get every little bit of cut yarn because there are quite a few of them. But after they're gone, it really stays where it belongs. Try to run a needle through the stitches so you can get a better look at them as I pull on them. See, they really are all closed lo loops, amazingly enough. And there's the yarn tail that we need to bury.